Okay, thank you very much. So now we are turning, uh, we are turning around in the way that now you are the ones putting questions and comments to people up here. And we will do it in the way that we would like to ask the three people who were talking before uh, coffee break this morning, meaning Ika, Ove, Annika, to come up and sit here and uh, and uh, respond to questions dealing with the subjects that they were touching upon. Upon, crowdfunding, I'm just waiting for Tanya, no, not Tanya, for Annika. So you sit down and Ika as well. And I mean, all kind of questions are, are now um, welcome. And uh, the way we do it in Denmark is that we are not waiting for questions. Sometimes we're just going down and giving the microphone to somebody. And then you, I mean, you've had a lot of time to think about clever questions. So don't be shy. And I'm starting with you too. Young people, uh, documentary people, documentarians from St. Petersburg. I'm sure you have some comments or some questions to these people. Who wants to start? Long hair, short hair. Short hair. Good, and you say your name. My name is Ksenia Krabrych. About seven years I work with interactive media. In St. Petersburg we have a department in the university um, dedicated to this area that I graduated from in 2012. I'd like to comment on how things happen in Russia. Before that I was studying feature films. Now I worked with interactive documentaries five years ago in Russia. I had problems even explaining to people what's interactive, what transmedia. People open eyes very widely. And for an hour I had to explain them, to them what that is. Now the situation changed. But still, I want to say that there are no state-funded programs in Russia that work with transmedia, with interactive arts. There are no such programs. No, and that's it. Not at all. So my question is, I'll try to formulate it. I am a person who is in charge of interactive projects. I do not just do documentary films, regular documentary films. If we talk about interactive films, finding finances, we understand that film costs money, we add programming costs and costs for design. What, what can directors do, very not numerous directors of interactive documentary films who try to find financing, what do they have to do, what they can do, because the situation is not very clear. Do we have to make certain films? to show what the author can do, but what what can they do at all? So, like, I don't really know how to formulate that. Or do we have to go and study in media schools in the West or just do the crowdfunding? Or do we have a chance to write an application to some foundation, for example, without having a portfolio with a lot of interactive projects in it, gain the financing? But you know that interactive projects, there are not so many interactive projects because we're just at the start. When we're just creating the language of those interactive projects, actually. So maybe you have some recommendations for us how it is better to start. I'm sure they have. Annika, I think you were first. Yeah. Well, first of all, w welcome to the club of strange people where nobody understands what we're doing. Nobody understands what I'm doing, too. My mother thinks it's sinful. We should watch TV at 7 o'clock when the program is on. Anything else is wrong. 
it's this guy that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the first thing I want to say, like for for example, in Sweden, we do not have massive state funding either. The Swedish Film Institute can fund transmedia as of January 1st, but only with the same amount of money that they already had for films. So there's no new money. We're the only ones that actually fund projects in Sweden, but we don't have big budgets. Um, as for money, two things. The Can Canadian Media Fund exists. Uh, Canada recently, the five major funds in Canada two weeks ago came out with a, a new mutual co-production agreement. So Canada wants to co-produce interactive documentaries. So that's one thing, to find a co-producing partner in Canada. They have the money and they have the knowledge very much. Um, the second thing is to work with platforms that already exist. There's an English project called Beat Girl that, for example, have used uh, Pinterest, Facebook, and YouTube as platforms, so they don't build anything. You use what's already there. Another thing that we give advice to our projects is universities. Particularly in documentary, it's kind of you can find a researcher that is already in your topic that's interested in it, and you have a lot of the research for free. You have somebody who's engaged in it. Um, we have one project that Ilva's been involved with. Your art images. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about uh, what happened with the Medea thing. But as, yes, I was, like, I'm going to pass it on to, to Uwe for one project that he's involved in that was developed at Boost and that's now at the university with interesting funding. <laughs> well, I think you're right, Annika, that, that it's about finding partners. And, and just to take one step back before I go into with a concrete project, I think what is happening with in the interactive world is that we're seeing a lot of new possibilities that we have never seen before, which is great. The backside is that the standard model is kind of dead. <laughs> Where if you go back uh, 10, 15 years, um, I think there was much more a standard model of, of financing documentaries that you could kind of tap into. When you were developing an idea, you could uh, very easily kind of copy-paste the previous funding model and, and more or less use that on, on the new project. I think that idea of a standard model is, is totally over. Unfortunately, now you have to work more and more from project to project and really, like Annika is saying, hook up with the partners who are relevant for that particular project. Um, but, but I think the good news is that there are many opportunities and there are many possibilities for that because, as Annika says, if you can really find the right partners who have an interest in the, in the same subject, um, you can find different ways of, of funding your project. The project Annika is referring to that I'm involved in is an interactive project where we basically try to make uh, archive material from a city um, spanning 100 years. So basically the, the, the time frame where we have uh, living images, we have archive material spanning from a particular city. And we want, we want to make that archive material alive in the city today. So when you walk around in the city, you can actually see the archives. You can stand in a particular place and see, okay, what did this place look like 50 or 60 or 70 years ago? And that project we're doing together with the local university because they have a research project uh, where they are trying to find out how do people of a certain age use interactive media. Um, so it's, it's becoming a research project together with them where part of the funding is actually coming from, uh, from the university research funding. Um, and that's a partnership that we are running now. So I think it's, it's, it's those kind of collaborations you have to find because um, it, is, it is, in a way, frontier pioneer work. And, and you have to form new alliances. You have to find new ways um, to, to fund it. I just want to add, too, I, I don't know how much you have uh, grant organizations here, but uh, I have one project at Boost that realized that to look for grants from different organizations, um, it helps if you're a non nothing. Eh? But you can even look internationally. If you're a non-for-profit company, you can apply to much more funding. And everything is, too, if you're doing an activist documentary, for example, my advice is always to find out which organization is working with the topic that you're interested in making your film about because you can find additional funding from them or another platform or help or that they host your project on their platform so you don't have those costs. So I think where documentary filmmakers has always been our little crowd in our little corner making things our way and now it's time to just cross barriers and open up to who else have interest in doing this and finding new partnerships and just continuing being curious. And it's hard wherever you are, but it's fun too. It's, uh, it's a new frontier. We're breaking ground. Uh, uh, very briefly, I mean, it can be that I used the uh, name uh, web 
that the web, web is the first platform yes, product in, instead of interactive documentary. So we could say one traditional way, like you say, television broadcasters and film foundation. It has been a problem and it's still a problem. Perhaps Arte is the only one who is really investing. At the same time, we can see the first signs of that, that also there is a change. Like in Finland, Finnish Film Foundation, another foundation and Finnish broadcasting company together, we are going to produce a special project only for the net, short, docu short documentaries only for the net with a really good financing next year. This is one. Secondly, yeah, yeah, and second, secondly, there is special foundations. There is like a NFP from Canada, but also in Finland you have a small foundation. There are some special foundations which are more and more giving money for the, especially for the digital form or the web format. And thirdly, and I think this is the most important, is that think totally differently, that you have a private companies, you have the governments, even the Northern Dimension partnerships on the culture, it's more open, I would say, on products for the web than the traditional conventional documentaries, or you have a cities, or you have the universities, or you have even the uh, mobile server, you know, companies mo who are doing the mobile. They are investing quite a lot of that. Like, for example, an internet server, Mozilla, has a huge project how to produce content to the web. So, and I think that is exactly that will be the future more than this traditional looking at the television. That that will invest more, but never in that sense that you are waiting for. So I guess if we should refer to this question, what to do if you don't have any funding within your own country, you could say that the, the traditional documentary scene, although the financing is going radically down, it's very, very organized. There's a lot of places and forums to go to where people meet with international financing, international co-production, and that doesn't exist within transmedia. It's much more fragmented. That's what you're saying. Well, it's more fragmented. I mean, you can. I mean, you do have a transmedia pitching forum part in um, Aditva, for example, or in Canada you have Merging Media in Vancouver, which is for transmedia projects. So it's, it's coming. But the money isn't there because, of course, the, particularly the governments are lagging. I mean, the, Canada is the only country that really is investing in transmedia. In 2010, they decided that you can get no federal funding for your film unless you have a second platform. But then they put a giant fund in place for it. And so, therefore, there are trailblazers, and we're trying to use them as an example in Sweden now to maybe get funding going. But the, the world is moving forward so fast, right? So, of course, the structures cannot follow. So, in one end, we have to, we have to reinvent what we're doing. Yes, you do, I wouldn't say. I was, but not, not to the level that you do in Canada, but you, <laughs> but you are, but still. Yeah. Okay, we'll get some additional information when Maria uh, gives her lecture. Uh, Maria is from Norway tomorrow. Uh, I, was, I was wondering, Olga, you're, let's stay in the same generation as Ms. Shorthair before we move on to some of the, I can see there are some who are slightly older among the, audi among the audience. You have, you, have been, you have approached this international uh, financing scene with a project which is a traditional, one-off, very beautiful documentary project. Have you been? Have you been met with? Uh, have you thought of working within the cross media field as well? And have you met that when you have been around with your film project? Have you met the requirements of, of uh, adding a transmedia aspect? Um, yeah, I remember. Maybe it was in in Riga in, in Baltic Sea Forum, and it was a person I think from Sheffield Film Festival, and he told me that yeah, maybe you can make uh, this something transmedia and maybe different. Uh, girls, maybe because my film is about uh, forbidden to sing for women in Tuva, and uh, I think maybe he says that maybe we can find the same stories in another 
countries and in other cultures and make transmedia. But to be honest, and I don't want to do it now. Uh, <laughs> um, and maybe my not, first maybe question... In, maybe, maybe not in terms of this project, but as a filmmaker, can you see yourself working with transmedia? My first question today in the morning was about this emotional impact about what will be this film and uh, for me film it's something that really make you cry and transmedia for me it's more uh, something informational when you understand me when when you get a lot of info but maybe information but maybe you don't get these emotions so I think that it's more journalistic and you know, um, so for me, I don't see this for my project. But I asked my my producer, my Polish producer, Dara Trashkovska, and we discussed this. We discussed that maybe we can do it, but she said that uh, it's too difficult to find financing financing now. It's it's difficult to find money for traditional documentary, and it's too difficult to find money for transmedia. Is that a fair distinction, that film is emotional and transmedia is factual? No. So say something more. <laughs> Depends what projects you have looked at. Um, look at the NFP high-rise, for example, that are connecting high-rises around the world, which in many ways are a very emotional project once you enter into it. Or they have another one that I like a lot, it's called Insomnia at NFB Interactive, NFB.ca Interactive. If you have problems sleeping, that's a, pro that's a project for you. But it will make you feel things. Depends what you will come across. But I find the creators today, it's not, they're not using transmedia in an informative way. They're really trying to create a new way of telling stories. And we're at the early stages of a new way of doing that. So, And the problem, the combination of that, where we have so much new technology and lack of funding, makes it we're like in a tricky beginning of shaping something that's entirely new. But why is it that we think that there is this division? It must come from somewhere, huh? I don't know. It's, it's the first time I've actually heard it put like that. I think it's different from country to country, and every country is having their own, finding their own way of doing things. Huh? Would you, do you agree? But it's that's informative. No. No. I mean, for, for instance, this. Um, very good, very good um, um, production by Gebrüder Beetz, Farewell Comrades, yeah? They have films, four-part series, films, and then they have a website, and it's very informative. German production I mean, company. German production, you're clicking in, and then you get information about... A anybody here from Farewell Comrades? Huh? Anybody here involved in our project? Sitting down there. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's, 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 not, it's, it's, it's not it's creative absolutely, but it's 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 there to give information first of all. Am I wrong? But that doesn't mean that all transmedia products are like that. Uh, and I no. think why, so. But I'm 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 missing one where you cry. <laughs> Try to make one and it will make you cry. Can, can, I, can, I, can I add, you know, one, one thing is that uh, during the last years in, to so many projects has been proposed that why don't you make it at the transmedia? And I would say in half of the, half of the cases it's a bullshit. Why to spend huge amount of the money to create a website that nobody is visiting or that doesn't really function? So there is a absolutely have to be big distinction. One, you make a film and you use that whatever media forms, social media, web, website, YouTube, whatever, to market and distribute and make your films to know. That is totally different than the transmedia project as such. Secondly, you ha create a website because your film needs additional information or there is a sequences which are not in your film. So it will be more full film. So it's a supporting the film. That's a different. Thirdly is coming the question. You create or modify something to the var various numbers of the platforms, very often first for the net. So you create something that is for that distribution platform. And then we come to this question that I agree. Three years ago, we went every, two years ago, every F 
but even standing from the prison valley, going to the high rise, looking at the farewell comrades, looking everywhere. And absolutely there is a question of this, that how to say, emotional engagement. Because you are shifting from one mood to another mood very rapidly. It's like editing the film and in transmedia or in the web, that's a really, really difficult because you have a different layers of the abstractions. And that's why I agree with you that very few transmedia projects are emotionally very engaging. Alma, I would say, Alma is one. Alma is very few one of them. And we have to accept, can be that in the future, we will have different kind of products because people are producing them. But personally, even I'm in Finland and we had a very fast internet. I hate every extra clicking that I have to do. I have never went Prison Valley more far than 15 minutes, even it's done by my friend. It's just so boring. Annika? Well, I just want to say first that I don't think that every product should be transmedia far from it. But we are very early on in a whole new way of telling stories. Obviously, we make clumsy, bad efforts in doing it. The same as the very first films weren't very good in the end when you looked at them. It's just part of, and I'm talking the very early centuries, it's part of all that. So what I'm asking from the filmmaker community, because I find many filmmakers, producers, some TV buyers, being like, no. Instead of like, where did the curiosity go? I'm not asking anybody to do anything, but I'm asking people to stay curious. The world is moving. We can either hide in the cave and say that nothing's happening or be very angry, or we can just look at it and be curious. We can say, this is not for me, but at least I have explored it. And we can also see where it's heading, because we come with an old linear thinking. We should never forget that we're, we're, we have grown up linear in everything we do, which is why we end up having a lot of this clicking. And I agree, clicking is very boring. Alma, the product uh, which you find at artit.tv, it's not, you don't click, you move your fingers on the screen, so you move organically through, through the project. Much better. And that makes a huge difference. And that's like, it's going to be a classic work when you look back in the history of interactive cinema. This is the first work where you don't click. You move like this, graciously. Okay, before we, we continue, could I ask Gins, Ronaldas, and Olga to come up and sit here also to participate and receive questions? Yes? Please, I mean, there are three tables, uh, uh, chairs. <laughs> no, you stay. You stay. Maybe there are some more words from you. You never know. So, uh, actually, I was taking the microphone out of your hand. I just wanted to say about the feelings. No. So the question, uh, coming back to the question about uh, emotions, uh, new form appears not to, to remove the old one or to become an old, but to express new content. Talking about interactive media, in this respect, uh, if we speak in, in, in cinematic terms, and, or could it be a, cinema, uh, a, a cinematic term, it's, 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 it's a senseless because the principles of dramaturgy is quite, of filmmaking is quite different. The principles, the foundations of filmmaking is quite different. Because we, there's no developed language. But it doesn't mean that this thing can be less emotional or un unemotional. The language is different. So things that can be expressed in, in linear, in, uh, in fiction or in animated film can be expressed through full linear film. Or, uh, and to what extent it can be emotional or uh, unemotional, it depends on the author or of the producer, or the director. So uh, a standard uh, documentary can be boring just as well. Ну да, мы уже видели такие примеры. Не вопрос, просто такое замечание. Итак, обратимся к левой стороне нашего зала. Итак, кто у нас первый поднимет руку? Да, пожалуйста. 
I'll talk more tomorrow, but I just need to say something about the, um, the emotional transmedia projects. There is one really fantastic one which uh, captured me a couple of years ago, Granito, I think you know it, about the massacres in uh, Guatemala and how they gathered uh, witness testimonies of survivors. And I think that's the way of how they're using the interactive, actually, that people also are coming with their own stories and putting it into the project. Uh, and there is a lot of emotion. So it's all about what story you're telling and how you're using the media. So you should look into that. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Maybe if, if, if we are uh, addressing a little, sorry, elderly generation and these young ones here, maybe the, the, the key word is that the storytelling has been linear for a couple of thousand years, huh? So what does it mean that storytelling is... No, storytelling hasn't. It's been linear for a hundred years. It wasn't linear before. Well, when I, when I, when I was sitting at the campfire uh, 2,000 years ago, I, and I told stories. That I watched, were no, but then you watched your audience to see how they reacted, and you would change or add to your story depending if they were interested or bored. Okay, so that's, that's the difference for yeah. me. That I'm and you could add elements, you could bring on the same as we talk in front of an audience, if the audience look bored, we try to move to something else. Okay, yeah. but the question still remains. Is it because we are terrified that we don't, um, that it's difficult to make this step from traditional filmmaking to transmedia? Could I ask one of you? Who would, who would like to say something here? Ну, а, значит, вообще девочка, я прошу прощения, я забыл ваше имя. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I overheard your name, Ксения. Uh, said very, very, was very right in expressing her ideas. Uh, the, the cinema is like one single thing and, and a, some wholesome thing. It's like breathing in and breathing out and, and getting an, an impression. In terms of interactive, uh, uh, which, which involves uh, my own personal activity. It's quite a different, um, quite a different approach, implying some, some rational activity as being a structure, like a, stru like a structured uh, impression, structured uh, activity. So we have no answer to how we make it like a like a wholesome, uh, very uh, ended, uh, perfect uh, uh, impression. Okay, I have seen lots of DVDs, uh, websites, and presentations, but it has nothing to do with with cinema. It's if you if you wish, it's like a book with different chapters. I I, I can look at one pic at, at one at one page, I can look at a different page, it's a different, uh, different spectacle, different approach. So uh, probably if, if the is special aesthetics has developed, then it will be easier to, uh, to answer that question. I, I, I really want to, because let's say, let's no, just take a first interactivity. You know, what does it mean when Mozart made a mistakes when he was composing? He was doing interactive music because he said the mistakes makes the audience to be a creator of the film like Umberto Eco has written. Very often, interactivity doesn't mean that you are making concrete action, like reacting with your computer. Interactivity means also that you are communicating with the film in your mind. You are the creator of the film. And that means that the best so-called conventional films, emotional films, are very interactive in that sense. Only that we now you have a tool to make also concrete actions to react, to express your reaction in your actions. So it's not so big difference. Secondly, the, another thing, I totally agree, N linear thinking is in one way prisoner of when we go to the transmedia and we look at the Another question is that do we need a flow of the stream, stream, flow of the stream in every case, even if it's nonlinear? 
And I think that's when we are doing for the web, that is the main, that is the big question. Is there is some kind of flow of the stream? And if we, we don't follow that, then we, we are not emotionally engaged or interactive with the whole product of what we are doing. It's very simple, actually. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Okay, forget it. I very simple. Rewind. Very simple. Rewind. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, of course. Please, please say your name, Ron. Yeah. Uh, Dmitry Kovakov, uh, Dmitry Kovakov uh, uh, a film director uh, from Sorry. Moscow. Uh, I feel that in the context of what has just been said, any art, any true art, basically interactive, since it's based uh, on action of what has been shown and what has not been shown. And uh, uh, more appealing, more emo uh, strong, stronger is what not has been shown. And it leaves the room leaves space for, for, for the viewer to enter that what hasn't been shown and to fill the, those uh, those empty empty rooms and to complement it uh, contextually. If we per perceive the doc documentary as a fo as a follow as a flow of information, and so the viewer is regarded as a passive element that is just loaded with information, and in this respect, uh, our talk about interaction is just return to the to the uh, to the uh, to the cinema in its uh, true sense of the world, of the word. Other questions we don't have to stick to? Uh, transmedia, etc. We can also go to crowdfunding, we can talk about screening of films, promotion of films, we can talk about institutions. Можно последний вопрос про трансмедиа? У меня просто очень практичный вопрос такой земной. Можно вернуть деньги, потраченные на трансмедийный проект? How, how can money spent on transmedia be paid off? How can we earn money on transmedia? I was just waiting for the translator to catch up. Hi, translator. Um, how you can make money on transmedia? The question is, like, how, what, what is the value back on the film in terms of, like, um, dollar value or ruble value? There are different things you can use at transmedia. You can get the audience to come to your film that will actually go see it in screens, for example, where the actual thing you do in transmedia doesn't pay itself off, but you will get greater awareness, or you will raise a worth around your name or the products you're doing. So there are all these other benefits around doing things as well, right? We can't just count money, value in everything we do in the arts, even if the economist wants to do that. There's a greater value as well. But they're also what I find a lot, like for Win the Ghost Rocket projects, where they actually have private investors approaching them about their app now that they developed for the specific documentary. Forget, keep forgetting to do that. That they developed for their specific documentary project, which is completely meant for that, but now has an added on value. So, in one way, I think transmedia is where the unsuspected happens. And what we always focus on to go back is always if you have a strong story. It all starts in having a strong story, and then it can grow organically if you want to. Um, Uwe, do you have any input? Well, I think you can you can think about it in, in, in different ways. I mean, one thing is, of course, money. But, uh, but I think you have to differentiate also between uh, what I mentioned, between crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. I think you can also get a lot of other uh, great input by being interactive. I mean, one of the campaigns I showed was Vinyl Mania. And they had th their, their fans were so passionate that they translated the film. So they now have the film available in, I think it's 33 languages, because people were so engaged in, in the film that they wanted to translate the whole thing. That means that when they actually, what they were crowdfunding for was the DVD release. Now the DVD is out in 33 languages. So I think it's, it's sometimes, of course, it's, it's about the money, but it's also about finding other ways of, of recouping your investment and being interactive. Two projects shortly. I'm, I'm a little bit brain dead today. There's an American documentary film that was made about violence towards women in America. And the filmmakers specifically made the film to use a campaign that would change the state law because no feminists worked in the world. But using the film creatively and using 
fundraising campaigns made the law change in five states in the United States. That's an immeasurable value to your work. Uh, another thing you should look into is a film called The Line. It's a documentary about rape, uh, date rape, uh, also in America, where they created a, uh, an information campaign around it, but they also created an app called Circle of Six uh, that you can find uh, in the iStore for free, which is basically a simple app where you can contact your friends. You add six phone numbers to close friends to you. If you're in trouble, you can, because we always have a phone like this with us often. If you're in trouble, you can choose to text one of your friends saying, I, I need help. And the phone sends your GPS coordinates, your, your, your address to your friend right away. If you're in a situation with somebody and you're feeling uncomfortable, you can click another button and ask your friends, can you call me and get me out of this situation? Uh, that app uh, they brought into India in Delhi after the big uh, rape where they raped a woman to death last year. So three months after that, the, dead, the app was in Delhi and is used by 28,000 and women now. The app is being located, uh, it's, being located uh, it's going to South Africa now, so all over the world different organizations are actually coming in and buying the app to adjust them to the local market. Um, so you're getting paid by the organization to do it. The filmmaker never thought about that when she made her first film seven years ago. But what's happening with the app now, it's that the uh, Weight Watcher Association are interested in buying the app, using it for their members, and all of a sudden you're having a marketing potential in the central media. You never know where things can go. The same thing with Ovis project, which is like a small archival film from the city called Malmö that all of a sudden have amazing university funding with it. So we just have to keep on uh, being curious. Fine. Can we, could we move to crowdfunding? Olga, do you know anything about crowdfunding? My name is Sophia. Sophia, yeah, that's Sophia. what I mean. Sophia. Sophia. Hello, Sophia. Hi. Hi. Sophia. Do you know anything about crowdfunding in Russia? Does it exist? Is it a good idea from your point of view? You are also a producer. Of course I think that it's a good idea if you could find money. It doesn't matter how you could find it. Just don't kill somebody. Um, uh, crowdfunding platforms do exist in Russia and, and recently. At least, uh, uh, while a couple of, couple of years ago it, it was uh, nearly unknown, but now uh, many documentarians are uh, searching also on uh, money also through the use of crowdfunding. It's a good idea in a way. We have to resort to any possibility of available. Me personally, I don't know about any successful projects that have been able to, to fundraise money through that. Probably has to do with the Russian mentality. We are, are not quite prepared to pay money for something. We, uh, we're, we very like getting things free of charge. But, any, but anyway, risk, risk is something, is something that is often paid off. So if, if, you, if you have money, if you're in trouble of money, so why could not I, trying it? Could I ask the audience of the, the Russian filmmakers who are here, are any of you having a film project that you think could be uh, suitable for, for uh, crowdfunding? Not that you have done it necessarily, but potentially. Sergei? Uh, I'm a documentarian. Uh, uh, listen, listening to the crowdfunding uh, debate, I think I still think I, I have to have to resort to it because I, all, I, all the money I'm left with uh, is only for for post production. So I really have to. So my uh, our discussion prompted me to agree in myself, like to 70 percent, that I will resort to, to that possibility. But I have to, to find an unconventional way because uh, in Russia, in, in Russian, no one uh, will, will never give give money just so. Everyone expects everything in return. So just just featuring their name, or if, uh, unless you are a very prominent, a uh, prominent. Uh, but animated film uh, director Gary Bardian, say, then say probably, say unless, no. I mean, what, what would qualify a project to, 
to, to do crowdfunding in Russia. So you have to say a little about the project, how you think it could work at all. To no my project. If you have a specific project that you would like to test crowdfunding. Uh, no. In частности, вы знаете, что это за проект. Это but you personally know what, what this project is about. This project has become even more relevant. Uh, it relates to Russian political prisoners, to the Soviet political prisoners, sorry. This year we, and there is a specific mu museum for political prisoners and the, the, the international forum that had to, had to was, was planned to, to be held in that museum was cancelled. So it, it was a signal that uh, in Russia things are going in a very specific way. I, I don't know if it's good for my film or not. But anyway, in, in our country, things can change very quickly. I'm, I'm done by 20%. 95 percent. 95% is complete. Uh, of the post-production? No, 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 no. Of, of the shooting? Yeah. And the post-production, what would that cost? Uh, it depends. Where no, no, it is. What is it? Okay. 10,000 euro. Uh, a, little bit, a little bit more. 15, a little bit more. Okay. 15. Uh, plus music. Plus music. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be possible to raise that in Russia? Would you no, 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 it's too much. It's would would it's your film much. be interesting for a Western audience? Well, it, it depends. I mean, I, at I least as far as I know, nobody cares about what what is going on in Russia in terms of uh, political repressions in Soviet times right now. I mean, I was talking to many other, uh, many different producers. I think many pe people care about what's going would on in Russia. Would you care? You might not find out about it here. Uh, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, we, we do care. Okay. Russia, Russia is on the front page every bloody day in Denmark. No, yeah, yeah, but come on, it's 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 reflected. I mean, his film is about today. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's completely about what is going on today. It's so it's connected with the with, with what was back, but it's completely what is going on right now. Because I was, when I was doing the film, I was quite optimistic about my co uh, country, what is going on right now. Today, I'm not so much optimistic anymore. It's, it's my personal, sorry, it's my completely personal feeling. Okay, can I, can I shift to another? Again, as a producer, many productions and so on, would you ever consider to go crowdfunding? Uh, Yes, and in Latvia it's very popular, by the way, especially for young directors who make their short films or their debut films. It's very popular to use such platforms, and they're quite successful. Last week I heard a story that does not deal with the cinema, but it deals with uh, crowdfunding. That was a story about a young marathon and runner who was running in the mountains and the hills all around the world and he was lacking money for to overcome some mountain in Japan so he sold so he sold through the internet through Twitter some kilometers of his marathon he succeeded and he needed only three days to sell them I think this way of thinking how you can sell a documentary film also I think it's brilliant for example you um, done with 95% you can say I'm selling the rest 5% for my potential viewers so this kind of thinking maybe so you have to use your brain to find the way. Uh, you, you are producing a film about Riga. If it happens that you are lacking some money, you could go to all the citizens of Riga and, and, and ask them to pay a little. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes of
course, but we are uh, in the beginning. We are starting to uh, collect money for in, in traditional way, uh, but, uh, and, uh, and not. Uh, I, I see this more uh, as a marketing instrument, not not as, not a, not a funding instrument. Yeah. Or it's uh, it's very good instrument for uh, for developing uh, project, uh, but uh, for production, I think it's. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think it's could really, really work. I was just curious because everybody keeps saying the Russians don't want to give any money to a project and yet they find you so generous when I'm here. Um, but would the Russian mentality be in terms of actually being active in a project and helping a project the way we have a lot of activist documentaries where they actually you can take part or you can sign a petition? Is that something that's in the mentality or that's like, or it's something one cannot do or it's just for tradition not done? Or is that something we can see could maybe grow? Because there are other ways of being part of the film as well. It's not just money. Yeah. The answer comes from <laughs> Sophia. I just want to say a horrible thing. I think it's a good thing I'm in Russia because maybe I would be locked. Uh, I would be bound to come back to Russia after my answer. 80% of population in Russia never left Russia. The quality of internet in Russia, if you talk about coverage, the country's coverage is not very high. The number of educated people who understand what's crowdfunding, what's a platform, or, for example, cross media. A very small number understands this concept. And among those educated people, the number of those who are able to pay is also very low. And those who are ready to pay is even less number of people. So, I mean, like, what you're talking about is very important. All the things we're talking about today are going to develop. We're at the very beginning of our pathway. But when I come and see the offers on some resource when people ask for money for different projects, I can say honestly, yesterday I could have given a thousand rubles for the TV channel that's called Rain, Dost in Russian. It's an independent internet channel who launched a new service. If you want to see, to watch that um, channel, you have to pay. Before that, you didn't have to pay. So you have to pay a thousand rubles. It's easy to do that. It takes about like 40, 50 seconds. And I actually did it. I paid a thousand rubles. And then I tried to pay for the magazine that's called Big City. I don't know how technically it's called. I think it's a platform, but the scheme, how to pay the money for them, it's very complicated. So I think a lot of people give up in the middle of the way and they don't pay in the end. So what is important in my story? Technical support have to be in a great, great, great level. So it has to be consumer friendly. Another thing is an idea. If you, if you watch a trailer or a description and people ask for money, but like like you are not touched by that offer, by that request. When I was listening to you, I remember the story of a producer of the uh, Namedni program. My countrymen would know that program, Namedni. There was a story covered by the program in the crowdfunding in the United States of America. A young man posted on the internet a video trailer for 30 seconds. He was holding a bunny in his hands and saying, I love the bunny, I love the bunny, it's the member of my family. But he doesn't have any money, so if I don't funny, I don't find any money till this evening, I'm gonna kill that bunny. What happened? That guy found a th fundraise a thousand dollars. So like, it's brilliant. So if you want to have post-production, you have to have a great idea, so people will think, oh, I have to pay the money, and it has to be technically doable, actually. I'm sorry I was too long. Yes, very good. Thank you. I think it's very yeah, important. Running out of the Can cooking. I just add one thing to that? It's very important not to ask for money, but to offer an experience. If you offer an experience, the money will come. So think about that. What's in it for the other guys, my advice to everybody. What's their interest and how do you meet what they need? And don't forget about the international audience and the Sundance Documentary Institute for a film like yours. Okay, we are running out of time. Mikhail, you have one more person to say something? Yeah, just a, f a final remark maybe from Patsy who is sitting here. As you can see on his face, very experienced. One more also, famous person. But also uh, very experienced uh, in terms of uh, shooting in within Russia and, and co-producing with Russians. Can you say something from the outside maybe that some possibilities that the Russians can't see from the inside, Patsy? Finland. 
So I was some ten years ago in a meeting in Helsinki where fin 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 Finnish and Russian filmmakers met and the result was that almost every Finnish filmmaker had been shooting in Russia but not, not the one Russian ha had been shooting in Finland. And that's why that the reason is of course because that Russia is that much more interesting place. <laughs> So the, 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 it's a very good starting point for every filmmaker and even for to finance your films from abroad. And we have, we have been working in Russia uh, since the beginning of the 90s, so it's more, more than 20 years. And those films have been maybe the most successful ones we have been able to, to, to sell abroad also. So that's, that's a good, good position you have. And, okay. Good. <laughs> thank you, Patti. And um, thank you, everybody in the hall. Thank you, panelists. It's been a good day. Tomorrow will be even better. Have a nice evening. Thank you.